Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Fan Experience TV. For those of you joining us for the first time, my name is Mike Kados. Alongside me is my co-host, Rick Molina. Rick, I guess you want to get something off your chest. Oh, yeah, baby. We'll go to the playoffs, clinch the winning record for the first time in eight years. The Knicks are back. Good evening there, Michael. How are you? I am uh, doing well. Um, obviously, it was a great weekend. Great weekend. Uh, had some Greek Easter festivities. Which yes. You uh, you were in attendance for and yes. experienced your first Greek Easter. So, uh, you know, tell tell our viewers. Well, it's down what's Greek Easter like? Greek Easter is very, it's very great. Uh, very fam obviously family-oriented. A lot of kids running around. Saw about four dogs, Freckles and Brian. And, uh, <laughs> What was the big one? What was the name of the big one? I can't remember. Frankie. Frankie. Yeah. And then the one that wanted to eat my fingers. Um, yep. 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 Uh, Stewie. Stewie. God bless yeah. Stewie. We love Stewie. But it was a great time. Your dad was cooking up a big lamb. Uh, friends and family were there. Our good friend uh, Alex was there along with the kids and Chad. And I think those are your brothers over there and your sister over there. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah my, my sister showed up for, uh, and your, for a second. And your, and but your yeah. uncle, Babu, was there. And it was a great time, and it was, uh, it was great, great food, great great, times, good, uh, great food, great the, times. The kids had a blast. The adults had yes. a blast. Uh, we all ate well. No oh, meat, yeah. just lamb. Lamb, uh, <laughs> great lamb. And, uh, no, it was it was uh, it was good times. We got into what your stage name is, and uh, yes, you said you wanted to mention my, that. My stage name became a debate, and uh, it was quashed real quick. <laughs> when somebody said his name is Rich, and that's it. And I was like, all right, done. So we'll go with that. But aside from all that, it was a great weekend in sports. We had the NFL draft, and I think we'll kick it off there with our beloved Jets, who I believe had a successful draft, drafting Zach Wilson in the second round. I mean, the second pick First, overall in the draft. Pick. Yeah. They move up uh, nine spots to get a Vera Tucker. They solidify the left side of the offensive line. And then in round two, they take Elijah Moore, who I think is like I, – I think I see Elijah Moore. I think Tyreek Hill, man. I think Tyreek Hill, I think explosive well, offense, yeah. and the Jets are doing the right thing. They're building around Zach, they're protecting him, and they're making sure that he has weapons to throw the ball to. So I think overall great. I think the surprise move in the draft was the Bears moving up to 11 or what yep. it was to take, 11. Justin, yep. to take Justin Fields. I don't think anybody saw that coming. I think the Bears had to redeem themselves from Mitchell Trubisky at that disaster. And so Matt Nagy and them decided, you know what, we're going to move up. They gave up a boatload, but they got up there. And took uh, Justin Fields. And this for the Giants and Kadarius Tony. Listen, man, playmakers all over that offense. If the Giants don't make the playoffs next year with the offense that they have, then Daniel Jones has got to go. Joe Judge has got to find a new quarterback and move on because the guy's got just weapons all over the place. Yeah, well, actually, uh, happy Star Wars Day to everybody out there. Oh, happy uh, May, May, yeah. May the May the Fourth, and uh, the Giants oh, yeah. are posting up pictures of uh, Dan. Uh, Daniel Jones in Mandalorian gear, <laughs> gear and calling him the Daniel Lorian. Oh, uh, so whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure the Mandalorian ain't gonna trip over his own feet. Yeah. On his what way to the draft. His, what would you What you think of uh, of the draft and what, what our teams did here? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm obviously you know happy with uh, what the Jets did. Um, yeah. Giant, you know, Giants made some some nice moves. I think uh, you know a lot of teams definitely filled some holes. Um, Jacksonville had a very interesting draft, and uh, you know that number one pick sometimes you know they get tricky. Like they get that one pick, and then everything else goes to shit. But yeah, you know they they kept the uh, quarterback and the running back together, which which is nice to see. Uh, at least they get a little bit of a rapport there. But Jacksonville um, has another running back there, no? Don't they have? Um, yeah, mm -hmm. Robinson. You know. Yep. Yep. And uh, I mean, Belichick is uh, trying to, uh, you know, fill some shoes over there in uh, New England, uh, picking up Mac Jones and, you know, his uh, his ex um, defensive coordinator Nick Saban obviously trusts how he evaluates players and gets them set up for NFL. So, you know, let's see. Let's see what happens with uh, with Mac Jones. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Andy Dalton was brought into the into the Bears, told he was going to be the starter, and then the Bears go and trade up yep. 
and draft their quarterback of the future. So it's going to be a battle between uh, Dalton and Fields. Um, and then F Nick Foles is really expendable at, the, yep. at that point. And uh, there's talk that, you know, he might end up with the backup job over here in, in the Meadowlands for the, the New York Jets. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Um, obviously, everybody out there knows that there was some drama draft day. The whole day, Aaron Rodgers oh, saying, yeah, I want yeah, out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he made the day pretty much all about him. And uh, yeah, it had to be about Aaron. And it's, uh, well, well, let's, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Now, all of a sudden, he wants to go to the Raiders. He's intrigued by the Raiders now. Uh, the the Niners had a deal on the table, and, and the Packers didn't want to take it. I don't know. It's, it's all a bunch of uh, BS. Here's, here's the thing with Aaron Rodgers. You were at the NFC, you went to the NFC championship last year and you couldn't put the ball in the end zone. You couldn't score. You got to the playoffs. He has all pros all over that team, man. Devontae Adams, um, Aaron Jones. I mean, he's got, you know, I mean, he has an offensive line that keeps him standing. I mean, he's got, you know, the defense is the issue, but he has all pros all over the field. And he's complaining that they cut some wide receiver that nobody's ever heard about. He's upset because of the Jordan, uh, the Jordan Love. He's all this is what it's about. He's upset about that they drafted Jordan Love, right? And he's upset about that, and, and yeah. he's throwing a tantrum, and he wants more money, and he's trying to get his way out. And I'm like, look, man, I get it that you can complain, right? Because look, you've won one Super Bowl, you're the, one of the most talented quarterbacks in the league. But Jesus Christ, man, you, your team is loaded. Stop complaining, go out and win. Enough is enough, you know. And so, listen, if it, it, at the end of the day, I think Green Bay is going to be forced to trade him. They're going to have no choice. And the question or, is, or, or, he's, or he's going to retire. Yeah, he's going to retire. What, what's he going to do for two years? Play Jeopardy? I mean, come on, host Jeopardy? Is, <laughs> is he really going to give up a couple of more prime years in the league to host Jeopardy? I don't think he wants to do that. I think he wants no. out. And I think he wants to go somewhere warmer, obviously, because he's a California guy. But, like, the question is, and I heard this on Colin Cowherd's show uh, today, he was saying that he's true. Can just the, the question is, can Justin – just a look play. Like if he can play, then you can make the trade. If he can't play, then you know, keep for another year and see what happens. But in I mean, other words, this is way too much drama, man. Yeah, I mean, let's be real. Like Jordan Love is not gonna fill the shoes of Aaron Rodgers, like right off the bat. No, like that. I mean, it's you know, Aaron Rodgers is a you know, he's he's a generational talent on yeah. that, you know. I mean, not not many quarterbacks of that caliber just come out of thin air. No. And uh, they also said, you know, that not one quarterback for the Packers has ever played more than 16 seasons. And it was Bart Starr, Brett Favre, and Aaron Rodgers. That's incredible. They all, they've all played 16 seasons. And now this one could be the one that puts them over the top. Or, yeah. or is he retiring? I mean, how much drama is just That's, going yeah. on with this quarterback stuff? Not even Rodgers. Like, you got the Russell Wilson drama. Now they're working it out. They obviously you had the Watson drama and that took a so turn. That's a whole legal thing. Uh, that's a, yeah. But yeah, I know. But before all that, there was right. still so much drama. Right. You know, Brady I mean, last year the, the Carson, Carson Wentz stuff, Brady. And Brady's also saying that Julian Edelman ain't going to retire. He's just coming. He just, he just didn't want to tell Belichick <laughs> that I, I, I like Tom Brady uh, on the box, man. He's just like this he's free just, spirit. Yeah, he's open, man. He's like, he's just this true, free man. spirit. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, it was it was a good draft. Um, you know, I'm excited for for what this year is going to bring. Uh, obviously, we got the extra extra games, and uh, you yeah. know, everything is being uh, shaken up. But we could talk more a little bit more about the NFL and everything after our next guest, and we'll talk about you know how these you know how these new prospects are going to play into these uh, into the field in the NFL. Mm -hmm. But speaking of prospects. Yeah, right yeah. now, we are joined by uh, New York, Long Island, New York comedian, and he was the host of Prospects on SNY. Please help us welcome Alex Aronson to the program. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for what's having up, me. Alex? How are you, man? How are we doing? Doing well. Good to see you guys. Thank you. Yeah, great. Great to have you on. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we, we pretty much start, you know, every uh, every conversation the same way you know so i i know you were born and raised in long island but you know where did you develop that that love for sports 
you know, who are your go-to teams at the beginning, you know, and were there any like moments or fan experiences that really hooked you in on, on a certain team? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, baseball, I think, was the first sport I gravitated to. And I'm sure, you know, as a very young kid, probably before I really remember, my dad was taking me to games. He grew up a Met fan. Um, and then I started playing Little League, and I think that got me even more hooked on it. Um, so I think baseball is probably the first sport, and it got, you know, hooked on the Mets uh, specifically. Then I got into hockey, too. Um, I remember going to a lot of Islander games. It was super easy. My, I mean, I don't even – my dad uh, was an Islander fan in the 80s, but, like, I grew up on Long Island. It's a 15-minute drive to the Coliseum. It's a hockey yeah, game. Yeah. You're in and out in two and a half hours. It's a dad's, like, dream. And tickets were, you know – free if not you know maybe a few dollars to go to an under game in the 90s so definitely going to a lot of games got me into it and then it's just stuck with me i mean i still uh, am a diehard met islanders fan um it's still definitely a bond i have with my dad um i don't play the sports anymore which is a bummer uh you asked like maybe an experience that got me really into it i, I went to spring training all the time when i was younger nice. uh in port st Lucie. And Edgardo Alfonso was like my favorite player at the time. Oh, that's, <laughs> and, I mean, he's my uh, favorite Met of all time. I loved him. Um, I think my first like screen name uh, was an Edgardo Alfonso like shout out <laughs> somewhere in there. It was like Edgardo fan or something. <laughs> um, and uh, I was trying to get his autograph. He was uh, in like uh, in the dugout area, but it was like a, a fence and everyone was trying to get in there. And I like got really pushed up against the fence. Um, and then he like said, Hey, like lead off the little buddy he called me like his little buddy or whatever. And I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. And I got his <laughs> autograph and I walked away feeling like a guard Alfonso now knows who I am. Um, and yeah, I don't, I think it's th those things like that and, and just going to games and then playing the sport as a kid are really what, uh, what got me into it. And, uh, still to this day. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously it's, it's, uh, something else when you're at the games and, and you go to them constantly and you just soak in that atmosphere and then, like you said, the bonds that you you form, you know, with, with your father or with, with your friends or whoever. And it's it's just uh, it's intoxicating. And obviously, a lot of us miss that in the last. Uh, <laughs> have you been to a game yet this this season? I mean, typical Mets fashion, the game I bought tickets to got rained out. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I ended up I ended up sitting home and watching myself on TV instead. No, was, uh, yeah, they've, been, they've been playing that show a lot with all these rain delays. There's another one today. They got postponed again tonight. So, uh, so, I have, so, so they, I they have it been yet. playing it on SNY. They've been playing the recaps. <laughs> they've been playing the show. I mean, so we filmed that show in, in the season, like the 2018 season. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we had high hopes that it would that it would come back for another season. I certainly had a lot of fun filming it, uh, regardless of you know some Met fans loved it. I'm sure you know some fans love shitting on it, which I was I always get a kick out of that. Um, so yeah, they, but they still play it. They play it all the time, uh, for better or worse. Like it's good to get my face out there, but um, yeah, still on TV. Yeah, well, obviously, growing up, you know, obviously a Mets fan, an Islanders fan, you know. There were some abysmal years, uh, you know, in the in the recent memory. So you got to be funny. You got to learn how to laugh. So, like, where did this, you know, this route going towards comedy uh, start for you? Yeah, I don't know if I ever made that correlation between, like, disappointment as a sports fan and then <laughs> wanting to be a comedian. But there's probably something there. I mean. Yeah. Well, you have to, yeah, you you have to be thick-skinned and you have to be, you know, obviously as a stand-up comedian, you're going to get those boo birds. You know, and, and you have to you have to be able to take it, and you, you've you've experienced all that disappointment from from the Mets and the Islanders. Yeah, I mean, I'm same used as to me. Usually, so you're right, you get it. I'm used to more dishing out the boo bears than getting it, so that was uh, a change. But yeah, I think uh, the Mets and the Islanders force you to have thick skin, um, and yeah, it's definitely important as a comedian. You're going to deal with a lot of failure, um, and it's tough, and you got to have a short memory and just kind of. Realize that in the end, you still, you still love the Mets, even though they blew it, and you still love to do stand up, even though you know you suck that night. Um, so yeah, there's, there, I'm sure there's a correlation there, and, and trying to you know make me a tougher guy or a tougher skin, look at things a little differently, have like not take yourself too seriously, and then uh, also appreciate the moments when they're good, because like you said, the Islanders have been mm -hmm. on a bit of a run the last few years, um, so I'm probably getting a little uh, spoiled with all this all this playoffs that I haven't been used to for a very long time, so. But yeah, there's definitely. I'm sure there's a correlation there between being a fan of miserable franchises and having a good <laughs> sense of humor. 
<laughs> yeah, they're just thick skinned. And and you got Rick over there. He's he's oh. uh, glowing because of his Knicks. I got my Knicks. Yeah, all the bills of business seasons. And now he's, <laughs> yeah, he's just uh, he's I, reveling I, in this year. Yeah. But Alex, I want to ask you. So for, for somebody who's in stand up comedy, what's it? You know, people who some people think, oh, I can do that. I can stand up there and do comedy. But, you know, tell us what's it like when you first get up there on a stage for the first time and you're, you got a bit and you get out there and all of a sudden it's like the lights are on. Tell us what that experience is like. Yeah, it's uh, I guess the first show I did, I had like been taking like a sort of like a class thing. So I've been preparing my like five minutes that I was going to do. Yeah. And then once you get like that first laugh, it's pretty like intoxicating um, and it definitely sucks you in. But um, certainly like people, I, I definitely think a lot of people think they're funny and there's, oh, I could do that. Um, certainly getting on stage and doing it is a very different thing. Um, but I mean, the biggest, it was such a shock because like the first show that you do, you get brought up as this guy is a stand up comedian. You know, the, the host brings <laughs> over, this guy's a very funny comedian. And he hits you like, I'm, I'm a comedian. I'm just doing one show and I'm a comedian. So it's like, <laughs> So they bring you up as a comedian. It's like, you better be funny. You know, you, yeah. said, you told everyone you're a comedian. So the first few times are definitely, um, it, it, it's kind of like the, your adrenaline so high that you don't even know what happened when you first start out. You're just so nervous. And, and at least I was and, and worried that like, you kind of don't remember what happened. Um, but then as you go on, you get, um, you get used to it and then you start to have more fun with it, even if it doesn't go well. But, um, yeah, certainly people say they can do it. I, it depends what you're trying to do. I mean, I'm trying to make a career out of this. This is what I, yeah. well, you know, I want to not have to work a day job and be able to make money off of doing comedy. So like, if that's your goal, you really have to immerse yourself in it. It's a six, seven night a week thing. You're getting up 10, 12 nights a week writing. Uh, you really sacrifice a lot to, to even have the opportunity to, to get even close to good enough to be able to maybe make it someday. So mm -hmm. I think people probably don't realize what a big sacrifice it is. Um, doesn't mean they're not funny, but it, it, you have to really love it if you really want to go for it. And when you got on stage that first time and, and you got that laugh, did you know right then and there, this is what I want to do for, for a career? This this is the path that I want to take? It's fun. I think I had decided even before I like started doing stand-up that like this is what I was going to do. Uh, I was super unhappy at, in my career. I was working yeah. advertising for a few years and I just, oh, I, was, yeah. yeah, I hated it. I was in a rut. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I always loved stand up and always like loved, you know, making people laugh, you know, not taking yourself too seriously, going back to the Mets thing. Yeah, like, come on, we're a joke. It's hilarious. We suck. It's funny. You know, even though it's not. Um, so, yeah. Um, sorry, I forget what the, what the actual question was. I'm so used to shit. No, I'm saying when, when, when did you come up with the, you know, oh, yeah. the yeah, idea yeah. that you wanted to do this? Yeah. Like, but, yeah, I, I was un yeah. I was unhappy with my job and I read this book. Uh, called Sick in the Head that Judd Apatow came out with that uh, interviews all like the big comics of the last like couple decades. Mm -hmm. And just like everything they were saying about the way they see the world and what their values were and what they cared about, it was like, this is the way I feel about things. And like, um, it was kind of an oh shit moment. Um, I think I, I was in Florida with my parents at the time, but as I was like making this decision, and I got like drunk one night and just was like, mom and dad, I, I'm funny, I'm doing comedy. And they were like, they they were kind of like pat me on the back. Like, oh, it's gonna be your hobby, that's cute. And um, I don't think they really knew I meant it like seriously. Um, and then I got sucked into it and I was doing it for a couple of years and then prospects happened. And that's when I was like, you know what? This this happened really quick. I mean, to be, to get something on TV like only a few years into comedy just like doesn't happen. And it felt like a fluke and imposter syndrome and all that. But once that yeah. happened, I was like, you know, I, I, I went from full time to working part time. I was like, you know, I'm going for it. I'm not going to uh, to wait any longer. That's yeah. Awesome. So uh, that is that that is amazing. And and like you said, you have to give up a lot. But with anything that you decide to do, like you have to be consistent. You just have to keep doing it day in and day out. You can't just expect it all to just click right away. You know, you have to work hard for whatever it is you want to do. And in your case, it's it's writing jokes. Um, you know, I went to your uh, website, AronsonComedy.com. Everybody out there, uh, you can find a couple of uh, clips from him. Uh, he had a stand up from uh, Gotham Comedy Club and a couple of reels from uh, from the show Prospects, which we'll get into in a second. Um, but yeah, you just have to stay consistent, and and that's really the the key to to anything. So tell us. I guess you mentioned Judd Apatow, so let me touch on that really. Really quick, who were your main inspirations? Obviously, Judd Apatow is big in the 
in the game and, uh, you know, is connected to a lot of people that are that are big in comedy. But, you know, who were your, uh, you know, main go to, I guess, like your top three, let's say. Yeah. Top three stand ups. Um, since this is not a popular answer anymore, but I'm never taking it back. Louis C.K., in my opinion, is still the finest <laughs> yeah. of all time. Put aside what he did, separate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's a genius. We all still listen to Michael Jackson, but, you know, so. Louis C.K. number one, and it's like, it's not super close, really, in my book. Don't really make me laugh like him. Um, I'll say Dave Chappelle, growing up on just like Chappelle's show and watching his stand-up, um, I loved. And then as I got a little older, really not stand-up, but Jon Stewart, I was a big Daily Show guy and okay. loved, that, loved that he was a big Mets fan. I think he's a Long Island guy, Jew. I just felt very... <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, I felt like I went to see a live taping of the daily show and I, I was just a big fan of his, Not, I think, I don't really, I think he did stand up for a bit. I don't really know much of it, but just comedically, you know, definitely one of my influences. Mm -hmm. I'll throw in like a name of a newer guy or that uh, Mark Norman, uh, to me is one of like the funniest guys working in New York city right now. And, uh, he's, uh, making a name for himself. So definitely one of the guys who, uh, yeah, I admire. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and yeah, Louis C.K. is he's he is funny, and it's it's about what he does on the stage, not what he does <laughs> off the stage. Right. Um, you know, obviously uh, that was a bummer to uh, you know to hear that stuff. But uh, so let's talk about prospects for a second. So where did it come from? Yeah. You, you know, where did you get this opportunity? Was it through a stand-up gig? Somebody seeing you perform? Was it was it through a friend? You know, tell us how did how did uh, how that gig came about for you? Yeah, it was pretty wild. I guess it was in like 2017. Uh, a guy that I work with had this production company that was he was doing like on the side that uh, was trying to sell this dating show to SNY and they wanted to film a, uh, a, a pilot for the show. So I went, they, they got me on the pilot. They were just looking for a Met fan that could be funny and he knew I was doing stand up and that was a Met fan. I was like, yeah, I, I could do that. So uh, I went on the, you know, the pilot version of the show as a contestant. Um, and I was there like intentionally to try and make people laugh and like crack jokes and like mess with the other contestants um, and like try and win the day because I wanted to look like the man and all that. But um, <laughs> I was like there to be funny and be kind of a personality. Um, and then I didn't I didn't get the date. I lost and I just left like totally embarrassed and like. <laughs> <laughs> pretty down on myself just feeling like <laughs> the dating is hard enough but doing it on camera is oh, hard. Yeah. so like so i i left like pretty disappointed i think they they sent me the cut of the episode like a few months later i didn't even watch it like i, I didn't even want to see what i looked like um and then like a year later um they sold the show and they wanted to add a host and they were through my name in the bucket um amongst with some other people who they couldn't get <laughs> um, and then, yeah, like the director and the producer of the show came out to one of my sets, just like see me perform. Um, and then from there, I put like a man on the street reel together for them and shot some stuff and then eventually, uh, got it. And, uh, it was pretty crazy. It really kind of, like I said, like I had not even thought about it for over a year since I'd filmed it. And then all of a sudden it becomes, you know, I'm the host of the show. So it was pretty wild. And what was yeah, it like to be, awesome. to be interacting with like players and like the executives there as you're doing this show? I mean, did you try to get any of the players to date? Did you try to, you know, like, date <laughs> any of the you know, stuff like that? Did you think of stuff outside <laughs> the box? I mean, we were, we were obviously like pushing to do all kinds of stuff. I mean, I love Gary, Keith and Ron, especially I'm a huge <laughs> Keith Hernandez fan. So yeah. like, I was always pitching them commercial ideas. I like, involved those guys, but it was obviously like hard to, to get them in on it. Although yeah. we were able to like shoot some stuff in the booth, which was cool. Um, but yeah, like the, one of the, like besides like shooting a TV show and like being able to, to get paid to be funny um, and all that was cool. But honestly, like as a childhood, thinking of a child to have the amount of access I had to City Field and the team was just like wild. That was any everything I could have ever dreamed of as a kid. I mean, we had like a dressing room downstairs, like right next to the locker room. So like I had the credentials. If I wanted to, I could have walked into the locker room, yeah. but I would have never been allowed back and that show would have been canceled. Or I would have been <laughs> not so I never did that. But to have that level of access was crazy. I mean, I remember the, the conference room, the uh, press room is like right next to where we were and we were filming the day Harvey got released and oh, like okay. so mm. the media attention was like crazy. And I'm like literally outside the room while Mickey Calloway is like doing the press conference talking about it. So like being that, 
ingrained in the team and like walking out of the tunnel with like Mr. Met and all this like <laughs> backstage stuff going on the field during batting practice. Like it was literally, it was living a childhood dream. And it was almost like the TV show was just uh, sort of the, the cherry on top of the whole thing. And how do they find those the contestants? Is it just random people that that apply that apply for it? Did you like pick people out of the stands? I mean, how did that work? Yeah, there was casting calls and people oh, sent okay. in like audition tapes. I got a couple of my friends on it, and uh, they made fools of themselves. So I have like <laughs> uh, I have blackmail on them for the rest of their lives. So um, yeah, yeah, we got a couple of buddies on. Nice. Was uh yeah. was the the rapper non rapper one of your buddies? <laughs> the uh, the I'm trying the to remember. That- the guy that oh, said he yeah. he rapped and uh, yeah, then he didn't, didn't yeah, rap that at all. One of my buddies. I love yeah, I uh, <laughs> I like how you just walked over in one of the clips because you know I I was trying to find like full episodes I couldn't find any full episodes but I saw you know some of the clips and you're just mm-hmm. walking over and just grabbing the slider right off the plate and taking it away with script. you that was yeah that was off script that was uh, no it was great <laughs> yeah I know you could you could tell it's like you you just uh, you just uh, were winging it and it was. Uh, it was really fun, um, you know, and I look forward to, you know, obviously watching some of these recaps. I didn't realize that the recaps are out there, so I'm definitely going to uh, keep an eye out for those for sure. Uh, but it's just it's funny because I found out about the show. We had, you know, a couple of interns working for us, and this show is part of playing the field, and pl- the playing the field brand is we're, we're building – a dating app that's Mm -hmm. mainly for sports fans. It's exclusively for sports fans. So he came up with, he was a Mets fan and he watched the show because he saw it on SNY a couple of years ago. And I'm like, like, how come I never knew about this? So, and uh, I was like, and I found you on, on Instagram and I'm like, Hey, come on, come on the show. But it's, it's just so funny because you know, that's exactly what I would like to do at, at some point is have, you know, people be dating, you know, right, right at the ballpark and obviously have those um, opportunities to, you know, to come up with some partnerships with teams and stuff. But it's really cool that you uh, like this, you know, this guy just made this show and pitched it to pitch to the Mets and they and they bought it. And I, I saw some of those clips where you're sitting there in the, in the booth yeah. and uh, giving the recap. So that must have been absolutely surreal. And uh, do you is there any news on because obviously that was right before COVID, you know, maybe a couple of years ago. But is mm. there any news on, you know, them rebooting it at all? Have you heard not anything? That, not that I know of. I mean, I still have contact with uh, someone who uh, former formerly used to work at SNY. Um, I, I don't see it coming back. Um, we've been, you know, I've been trying to get some people to tweet at Steve Cohen. I know he's very active. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, I just want maybe I think maybe his mm-hmm. wife like actually loves the show. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't think it's coming back. Uh, now, does still, Steve Cohen own SNY or the Wilpons think, still do? I think the Wilpons still do, but they're looking to sell. I don't know why Steve wouldn't just like want control of the whole thing. Um, he, I think yeah, he I did, think, and yeah, they I don't want to sell he wanted him. to sell it to him. Right, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, the Wilpons can't politics. do anything. Right? They, they couldn't even get their dating shows right. Was, uh... <laughs> well, they got their host right. <laughs> yeah. Well, the funniest part about the whole thing is I love Met fans, and I, I get I almost got where they were coming from. Like, why is this one have a dating show? I was like, yeah, I don't know, but I'm gonna fucking have fun with it. So shut the fuck up. But um, <laughs> um, I don't know if we can if we can curse. On yeah, yeah, sure. Fuck yeah. okay. yeah, it. All right, perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all right, great. So I dropped the first my first F bomb. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Mets fans were complaining. They're like, we we have a dating show, but we don't have a center fielder. I'm like, who do you think is how much money do you think we're making? <laughs> like you think I'm making, you know, uh, whoever they were trying to sign a few years ago, AJ Pollock money or whoever who it was yeah. who wanted to get. So so um, you can play center, right? Yeah. What how, how so obviously COVID's affected a lot of everybody's lives, obviously disrupted everything. How have you been able to sort of you know, keep your act going and like stay sharp and like throughout all this, just, you know, this horrible deal that we've been through. Yeah. I mean, comics have had to get creative. I, uh, I think I'm, I was kind of fortunate in the sense that I still have a part-time day job that I did not lose. And I uh, wasn't almost fortunate to have not gotten to a point yet where I was relying on stand up mm-hmm. for my income, because I know, I know comics that had a really tough time and, and it was, it was, yeah. it was rough. Um, so I, you know, really, I, I probably lost like four or five months, maybe a little more of just like not performing 
at all, or at least not consistently. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I, I would, I escaped to Florida in March. I, did, I I'm not, I guess I'm not a true New Yorker. I didn't stick it out. I've been through enough, been through enough torture. I didn't need yeah. to, to be in New York for uh, all this. So yeah, I went down to Florida for a few months. It was, it was probably a total of like four or five months of not performing regularly. And then in like late summer, early fall, I, I got back to New York city, started doing like park shows. There was a lot of that going on shows yeah. in okay. central park and stuff like that. Uh, which it was great just to like be up performing again, but it's obviously not the same. You need, you need the low ceiling and the, and the indoor laps, um, for it to really be the same. But then, uh, you know, people got creative. They did private shows and like rooftops, uh, backyards. I've been doing shows on like the patio of a bar in Midtown. So I, it, the last, uh, couple months have felt more normal where I'm, I'm getting up, you know, eight to 10 times a week again, which is, which is great. It feels like uh, pre COVID life again. Um, yeah. But it was definitely it was definitely tough for a time, and it's I don't even think I'm still back performance wise to where I was before COVID. You just it's hard to to get back there. Yeah, I, I was on your website and I, I saw a whole where you put went out of date last night. And it felt great to get back to credit card debt. <laughs> yeah, 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 I saw that one too. <laughs> I think that that's great. That, that's classic. So you got are you, so you got a couple of shows coming up. You know, tell our viewers if they want to go see your shows, like what. You know, you got a show on the, or you had a show on the twenty seventh and the twenty eighth. I mean, yeah, gotta, I got a. I, 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 I'm glad we're talking about the website because I literally just like after COVID went back in and I was like, I got to like my show from June twenty twenty was still, yeah was still okay. up there. Um, but yeah, I don't. I, I think this is live. I'll, I'll be at uh, the Three Monkeys in Midtown tomorrow for their eight o'clock show, and at Broadway Comedy yeah. Club as well tomorrow. Um, and then uh, this weekend. Uh, Mother's Day. I may actually be back in Long Island spending some nice. time with the mom. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'll uh, head to the website and I'll keep it uh, keep it up to date. <laughs> yeah, that website's funny. Man. Yeah, Those and definitely are you know classics. Yeah, and definitely <laughs> let us know and, and you know we can share it on our stories or, or, or whatnot too. Um, yeah. So are you living in the city right now? Yeah, I'm in uh, I'm in Brooklyn. I'm in Williamsburg now. Okay, nice. Um, so obviously you see, you were talking about getting creative and not much unlike us, yeah. you know, we started a, uh, a show, a podcast, TV show, whatever we want to call it. Um, and you started your own, uh, podcast around, uh, what was it? May, April, uh, of, of last year called all days off, uh, podcast. And, uh, you have a, it's you and, and a buddy of yours. So tell us a little bit about the, the show and where you came to concept and, and what it's about. Yeah, for sure. We, we started it um, <clears throat> during COVID. It's me and another comic buddy of mine. And, you know, like you guys said, we had to get creative, but it was hard in the first few months when you literally didn't even know if you could go outside, what the hell was going to happen to you. So <laughs> Mm -hmm. um there was just no outlet to like be funny and do comedy besides you know people hopping on TikTok and and, and trying to you know go viral on twitter so yeah you know, we, we, we thought starting a podcast we took a couple months to like think about what our like point of view was we're, we're both pretty similar guys he's a couple years younger than me grew up on long island you know had a similar upbringing um and uh i think I think you know, we're, we're millennials and there is a, st a stigma against us that we're like very, very, very lazy. And, and basically our point of view is that that's a hundred percent true. And yeah. like, we kind of like defend ourselves and kind of, you know, there's this whole hustle culture that uh, it became real popular like with millennials and you know, everyone has to have a side hustle or whatever. And even though yeah. like me and him are both hustling, trying to be comedians, uh, the people who have to consistently tell you about how hard they're hustling, that kind of like gets on our nerves. So we're we're kind of just like, you know, don't take yourself too seriously. We're we're about being lazy and slacking off and uh, we just try to have a good time. And um, it's a pretty laid back conversation. We bring other comics on occasionally. Uh, we talk about what's going on in the news and try and give our sort of our, our point of view. So it started uh, in the pandemic. Our first, our first episode came out probably like end of May or or in June sometime. And uh, some breaks in between. I'm sure you guys know it's it's tough to stay on the on a consistent schedule at times. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're trying to release every week now. And uh, yeah, it's all days off. Uh, myself and uh, my co-host Corey Oskowitz, another comedian in New York. Yeah, no, it's it, it, it's uh, it's a funny show. I, I listened to the the most recent one that you posted, and uh, it's funny. You guys got a great rapport and. You know, it's uh, you, you make people laugh, so that's uh, that's what it's all about. Especially in 
you know, times like this, you know, with people not uh, smiling uh, yeah. about much anymore. Everybody's all pissed off every day. Yeah, we're cool. really. I was thinking about this. We're all just walking around like with the middle finger at each other. It's just like everybody <laughs> is just like, just like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, yeah, fuck yeah. you. It's, uh, it's I mean, how do you, times. how do you, how do you know people aren't walking around with rested bitch face on the whole day? You got <laughs> right. a mask on. Nobody will know the difference at this point. Well, I'm officially, I'm officially no more mask outdoors while I'm walking. Everyone's, everyone's seen my face now. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll keep it on indoors, but. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was speaking, I've been living the post-COVID life for a couple months now with like all the comedy and being indoors and stuff. Yeah. So I'm probably not the yeah. model. Fauci wouldn't be proud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving on, Dr. Fauci. Well, there you go. Very nice. No, no, no that's incredible. Um, you know, I, and I want to ask you, so how, where do you see, like, so you're doing stand-up. Are you trying to take your career in a sense where you might get like, like I, when I was growing up, I remember Deaf Comedy Jam and and like shows like that. Are you are, are you just are you trying to get to that route where you're doing stand up shows like that? Eventually, do have your like your own special. I mean, are you thinking of maybe just putting out your own kind of content in, in, as your career develops? Like, where do you where do you see where do you want to trend towards? Yeah, I mean, my whole you know I, people come into this like with different goals. Mine it was pretty basic. It was I just want to make a living off of doing stand up. Um, and so like, obviously I have bigger goals than just being able to pay the bills by doing, by doing stand-up comedy. But like, yeah, I see myself going down sort of the, at least what I viewed as the traditional stand-up comic route, which is breaking into clubs, getting on late night, getting on, getting TV spots. And then, you know, who knows what, what happens from there. It's, it's changed a lot though. I mean, social mm -hmm. media has really flipped the script um, on how you can, you know, th that traditional model in stand-up is still there. Um, but the, you know, we would use the term gatekeepers a lot. They're not really there anymore. If you have a phone, you can you can put content out. So like, I'm, I'm someone who's focused more on getting good at standup. And, right. you know, I grew up, I loved watching standup comics do late night sets. It was like yeah. one of the reasons I love to watch Letterman and Conan and shows like that. So like, that's definitely been uh, a dream of mine when I started standup. And so I, I definitely see myself trying to follow that sort of uh, kind of traditional standup route. But at the same time, there's so many you know, so you were asking about like putting out my own content. So like, I think it started with the podcast and I, I definitely see the value in, in, in being able to reach more people with putting out content on social media. But er everything is a, is a time suck and it's an opportunity cost. You know, it's like, do you want yeah, to, yeah, yeah, time yeah. To, mm -hmm. to to joke writing and, and getting on stage or making videos and people, you got to find the time to do both, I guess, at some point. Um, yeah. But I, I see myself trying to follow, um, you know, just being known as, as a stand up first um, and then see yeah. what happens from there. No, yeah. I mean, you know, I, when I was a kid, I remember Def Charming Jam. I, I, I always remember watching uh, Bernie Mac when he first came out. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that, but it is one of the most hilarious stand-ups I've ever seen. I mean, do you do you also, like, go back and look at, like, you know, people like Bernie Mac, Eddie Murphy, you know, Richard Pryor back in his days? Like, do you see the old school kind of comics? Robin Williams, how they did it back in the day? Yeah, it's interesting. I, like, my my love for comedy started with like the comics I was watching that were hot at the time when I was a kid, which was like Chappelle and, and Chris Rock. Um, and then once I started doing comedy, I started having much less interest in watching comedy and watching right. like other yeah. comics do it. So yeah. yeah, I've seen some old like I've seen some like the Eddie Murphy stuff from from the eighties. Um, yeah. um, I've definitely seen some like Andy Kaufman and uh, yeah. and um, who else? Uh, like some Jim, Jim Carrey, Carrey stuff from yeah Jim Carrey from like the comedy store back in the day. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, it's definitely changed. Comedy's changed a lot in in terms of uh, you know what what a perceived line you can or cannot cross. Uh, you know, more people being more guarded about about what they yeah. say. But I mean, the art form is still a person and a, and a microphone, and that's it. Um, so yeah, I, I still I, I get I, I don't like watch as much comedy as I used to, yeah. but I do like watching the old school stuff because it is it just seems so it, it it's like so different than it is now, but it's still the same art. Um, yeah, like I think about a Jerry Seinfeld performance today. I, I don't know if he performs much today. I think he does, but I think his stuff in the '90s was just like classic. I don't know mm -hmm. if like today people would be like, well, "You can't go near that." I mean, it's crazy, right? He was a pretty uncontroversial dude too. So if someone has has issue with like whatever his, his salt shaker, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's just taking it over the top. I think. Yeah. Get have it. um, have you ever had the opportunity to open for somebody that you kind of looked up to in uh, in the game in the comedy game and any of your shows? 
not like officially like you know being in the opener for somebody which is you know them like you know saying hey take you on the road and or whatever um, yeah 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 speaking of, uh earlier a few months ago actually louis is still out doing stand-up and he was on a show that i did i didn't open for him but i went up after him so that's oh, probably okay. like the closest okay thing. all right and, this is uh, did you guys meet Say so, yeah, I mean, like you know, he's keeping a low profile, uh, right. you know, and he's Louis. It doesn't yeah. mean he's still a legend. And like, I, I'm yeah. never really the guy, especially when I'm, you know, trying to be, you know, a comic to to go over and start, you know, just being fanboying him. But um, but I, I got to follow him, which was sick. It was just cool to have a recording of like the host being like, and that was Louis C.K. And now here's uh, the host of Prospects, <laughs> you know. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> But then uh, I, you know, I gave him. I said, uh, I think he saw me come off. He was leaving. I gave him a fist bump. I said, it was great. It's great to see you out, and that was it. So there wasn't really much chatting, but uh, it it was cool just to be on the same stage as him, even though it, it took a lot of <laughs> shitty things happening, including his personal life and COVID, to, for that to to yeah. come to fruition. But it was still a yeah. really cool experience. Well, I guess you got to find silver lining somewhere, right? Yeah, right. for sure. Um, yeah. You know. Are you uh, are are you popular enough to uh, to get past the waiting list of uh, IHOP? <laughs> are you you see that Adam Sandler stuff the other day? I did see that. Yeah, um, I don't know if his mask was on or not. Maybe they just didn't recognize him. But uh, yeah, I don't know. That was pretty funny. That hasn't happened to me. Uh, I don't really have any <laughs> sway. I got I got recognized by I did the two most classic, just like Long Island things with prospects that have happened is a Long Island Railroad conductor recognized me. And <laughs> And uh, a woman who like worked at a snacks, uh, like one of the uh, food stands at Nassau Coliseum, recognized oh, me. Right. So I, but I asked her if the pretzel was free, and she said no. So I guess I don't. <laughs> have, I don't have. I don't. I don't know if I need to stand there. You got that. No, you, you don't, you, yeah. yeah, you don't. You, you're not. You're not quite there yet. But you know, no. you, you're, you're getting there. Um, I'm basically Billy Joel on Long Island, essentially. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, obviously you want to make a living doing this. But any any interest in uh, you know obviously you are the, the host of prospects. Would you be interested in hosting a show? You know something something like that again, or you know just being on um, TV in any shape or form. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, not, I'm not going to turn down any opportunity to pay me if it, if it involves if, if yeah. it involves being funny. Like certainly, and I mean. Yeah, you know, I said following the traditional stand-up route. I mean, like I said, that, that sort of exists, doesn't exist anymore, whatever. But like, I, I'm open to to 100% doing a TV show again. It was it was a blast. Uh, I definitely I, it came so early on in comedy that I definitely felt in over my head at the beginning. Um, but uh, after a little while, it kind of felt like I was in my element. And um, from that moment on, that's when I after like the first week of shooting, that's when I decided I was switching to part time to my job. So. I definitely loved it, and that's the great thing about stand-up comedy is you can lead to a bunch of different opportunities that include being on TV, and and uh, so yeah, I'm 100 percent open to opportunities like that again. Yeah, no. I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you got any like mini, you know, mini uh, set that you want to throw out there? Oh, <laughs> uh, that is that is the definition of putting me on. The spot. Yeah, literally, you don't have to do it though. You don't have to do it though. I'm gonna instead plug the website again. There you go. There's a okay. Link there. Aronsoncomedy.com. You can check out. There was like a five minute setup there. Yeah, uh, no, that was that was hilarious. I I thought the whole thing was funny. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, um, it's, it's uh, from a couple of years ago, but you know we still still tell some of those jokes. But but yeah, check that out. It's uh that'll be a that'll be a better representation of my comedy than anything. I've yeah, done yeah, before. yeah. <laughs> there we go. That that was that that's that's a that's the proper route to take. Good, good job on that. <laughs> so for all of you, Aronsoncomedy.com and and. Uh, on uh, the Instagram, it's all days off pod. Is that what it is? Yeah, the podcast is all days off pod on Instagram, and we're on Twitter as well. There you go. Well, Alex, thanks for coming on tonight, man. Uh, best of luck to you. I think you're gonna do great. When can we go see a comedy show? By the way, like can, if you're on tomorrow night. Well, on your on your website, will you be posting it like every time you're on now? Yeah, I'll start updating it more consistently. I, it's it's so funny. I, I like literally just went to fix it like a couple days ago, but uh. Yeah, I'll be tomorrow night at Three Monkeys in Midtown in New York City. Um, you can just go on Eventbrite, look for the comedy show, and it'll be up there. It's at 8 o'clock. And then yeah. also tomorrow night at uh, the 9 o'clock show at Broadway Comedy Club. So uh, two chances tomorrow night, and then uh, next week I'll have I'll have more dates up on my website. 
All right, sounds good. I'll be checking. Well, I got to go to a show. I work in Midtown, so I can, I may, I might be able to pop in and check a show. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Nice. Let me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Um, yeah, Alex, it was an absolute pleasure to have you on. Thank you, uh, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, one of these days, we'll try and catch a catch a Mets game. Absolutely, absolutely. I hope it doesn't get rained out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or the bags are does it fall off? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, thank you guys so much for having me. This was a blast. And uh, thank you. Absolutely. And you're always welcome on the show anytime. Thanks, absolutely. Guys. Take it easy. All right. Alex Aronson, everybody, go check him out. That yeah, that three is, monkeys tomorrow night and yeah. uh, Broadway Comedy Club tomorrow night. So that is so the um, truth. COVID is over. Go on a date and you're in credit card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, his t- his Twitter is uh, you know, it's pretty on point. You know, with a couple gotta, a couple of the little one liners that he's got in there. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's a it's a good viewing if you if you want to do it. Yeah. But yeah, definitely go to his website because uh, there's a there's a nice little skit from uh, his time, one of his um, sets at uh, Gotham Comedy Club in the city. I thought it was I thought it was pretty freaking hilarious. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, but um, you know, I'm obviously we talked about you know stand up comedy and there being laughs and there being booze sometimes for people yeah and the booze are prevalent in the new york city area today tomorrow and the next day because the houston astros are in new york in the bronx facing the yankees for the first time since all of the cheating scandal broke Oh, yeah. And uh, and fans in attendance for the first time. They couldn't even play the Astros last year because of the COVID, you know, only playing against the East. Right. So Bluebirds were in full effect, even if it's only 8,000 people, 10,000 people, whatever the case is. But they are letting them have it. You're, I, I got the you're a cheater. I'm during, yeah. during batting practice. There's Bluebirds uh, swinging left and right over there. So. The New York fans have a uh, opportunity to uh, to let their voices be heard, and let's be real, New York, <laughs> New Yorkers, They're they have a loud voice. They are very opinionated. I'm surprised somebody didn't show up with like a buzzard or like a uh, somebody. Somebody was dressed up like Oscar, Oscar the Grouch in a garbage can, and he was, <laughs> and he was banging. Did they the let him in the stadium? stadium? He was banging it. He. I saw a video being posted. He was outside the stadium, so I can't tell you if he got in. Uh, uh, but he was, you know, it was trending would, on, on, on Twitter. I'm, sure, I'm so, sure people were trying to get in there with trash cans and, like, buzzers and, like, you guys cheat. I mean, the, the chaos <laughs> over there must be insane. And it's only, like, what, eight, 9,000 people in there? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I think I think they have a little bit more room than City Field or is the other way around. No. I think so they're – I think they're – no, I think one of them's one of them's got like ten. One of them's got like eight, I think. Yeah, right. but to me, City Field just looks bigger. I mean, you go to City <laughs> Field and it's just like immense. Um, and of course, your beloved Mets get rained out tonight. Jacob Degrom's lat mm-hmm. is inflamed. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, the Mets. You know, they fired Chili Davis in like the most awkward of ways. I mean, the Mets, man. What's going on over there, Mike? I mean, talk to us, man. Well, give, give us the four one one. What's going on? Ah, uh, I mean, wish I could tell you, but yeah, the. Well, Jacob three, DeGrom was three, scratched today. Four, uh, they say it's not anything serious. Uh, it's going to yeah. miss him one start. Uh, yeah, like you said, rained out today. Yeah. Not um, not uncommon at this yeah. point in time. Yeah, pretty uh, much. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're playing the Cardinals. I believe a doubleheader tomorrow, and then they have a game on Thursday as well. It's a four-game set. Uh, I mean, just got to hope for the best for – for Degrom, and um, you know, there's there's nothing else you could do, but um, but just wait and see. And yeah, the Chili Davis thing, you know, obviously they're they're going more on the analytical side of things and not really the pure hitting side of things, which you would Correct. think for hitting, you kind of want to learn how to hit, right? Yeah, yeah. But um, well, I, I think apparently I analytics are are better than. Than pure, pure, pure hitting, pure, pure hitting, yeah, pure hitting uh, approach and all these different things. Stupid so analytics. I, it's uh, it's questionable <laughs> at best. 
yes. the uh, the decision to let go of Chili Davis. But what are you going to do? It's 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 the Mets. Yeah. So we were discussing this obviously before Alex came on, but we were talking about the NFL draft, and then you and I were talking, I think, before the year about who the rookie of the year is. So, or who the rookie of the year might be. So I will let you lead off and see who do you think will be the 2021, 2022 NFL rookie of the year. You have to put the money on a quarterback. I I would have wow. to assume that's bold. You'd have to put your money. The smart money is on a quarterback. So you're saying Trevor Lawrence? It's not going to be Zach Wilson. I'll tell you that. Um, they it could be Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. It could be Justin Fields because they have a nice group. I mean, the Bears did go to the playoffs last year. Yeah, right so they the have yeah. so they have a team around him. They're not in a complete rebuild like the Jaguars are. Like obviously they were the worst team in football. Right. So you're you know, um, can Trevor Lawrence be the MVP of his team? Absolutely, but the entire league, I don't know. Uh, so I think Justin Fields is is a. Uh, High possibility there. Um, I don't see a wide receiver winning it. However, I do see a lot of wide receivers really showing out. Yes. Um, did uh, who won the rookie of the year this past year? Was it um, Jefferson? I thought uh, it was Justin Herbert. Did he win it? It was. It was Herbert. It was see? Herbert. Yeah. yeah, but look at what what's his face did at the Vikings. Yeah, no, Justin well, Jefferson went off. He broke the yeah. Records. But I'm saying he he was. He was breaking records left and right, but just even even if he was balling out. But the thing is, yeah. he was balling out and still couldn't uh, you know couldn't even get close to that conversation. So that's why I think you know quarterback is more on the smart money, um, and I think I think Justin Fields has a shot. Zach Wilson, uh, I don't see it. Uh, I think he's going to do well. I think the med, the the Jets are going to flirt with six or seven. Wins this year. I don't know wow. if they can get to that. We're, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. But you're saying that uh, the Jets six win. I mean, you remember you got another game too, right? Um, okay. So six and what is that? Six and uh, eleven. Six and eleven. Six and eleven. I mean, you know, that's doable. Seven and ten. Seven and ten. I'll give them seven and ten. They could they could get to seven and ten because they did. You know, they they shored up that offensive line a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, drafting a cu- couple safeties, cornerback, a couple of defensive uh, players, another wide receiver, and Elijah Moore, who you yep. think reminds you of Tyreek Hill. I and think that's what we stuff. were saying about Devontae Smith a couple of months ago about the whole, you know, the, the wild card, and we got him in the second round. So, you know, I, I mean, think, look, I, I think, think they're, they're going to be a couple, of, they're going to be Jamar <laughs> Chase, obviously, Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith, I think, Kadarius Tony. Elijah Moore. I mean, there there are some stud wide receivers out there who are going to fall out next year. Yeah, but you know what, the J- Jamar Chase though, like they did they get did they give him any kind of decent but, protection? They no, did. He's going to get killed again next year. He's he got Jackson Carmen, offensive tackle from Clemson, and other than that, they got a fourth rounder in Deontay Smith, offensive tackle. But you know they. I mean, they could have had Penny Sewell, Rashad Slater there. And yeah, they exactly. They went. I mean, he's got. A, I mean, unless they get overall a, rank is seventy eight, grade is seventy five. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I don't unless really they're gonna, unless they're gonna, you know, sign a left tackle from somewhere. And I don't know where. Penny, Penny Sewell went to who again? He went to Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, that's right. They'll well, be protecting Jared Goff over there. And yeah, Rashad's- I mean, I think. You know, um, I think that Jared Goff's going to do well in uh, in Detroit, but they they got one wide receiver. I mean, they have they have questionable wide receivers, so yeah, maybe Detroit's you know, their, be offense, they'll, they'll be picking, their offense is not going to be great. They'll be but, picking um, the top five again next year. You know, but Denver um, got a stud cornerback and and certain Denver's uh, interesting Javon because right? Williams uh, running back, so they got Melvin Gordon over there. They got um, yeah, Lindsey's gone, right? 
Is Lindsey gone? Yeah, I think Philip Lindsey. Yeah, yeah, I think he left, and then they got this Javante Williams coming in, uh, offensive guard, outside linebacker, a couple of safeties, another wide receiver. Obviously, they got um, Jerry Judy and um, what's his face? Uh, I can't remember the one that got injured last year. Um, or Cortland Sutton. Cortland, Cortland Sutton. Sutton. Yeah. yeah. So they, you know, so they got some pieces over there, and and who just went over there? What what quarterback just went over there? Why am I drawing a blank right now? To the Broncos? <laughs> yeah. The uh, Broncos just made a trade for a quarterback. Huh. I don't I uh let me see. I'm trying to look it up here. Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater, yeah. This Teddy, is Teddy Bridgewater, Bridgewater nice and they got and they got Drew Locke. So um yeah, there was a meme the other day. Please pray for Jerry Judy. He's not hurt, but he just has Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater. That's what Drew Locke is out there. Yeah. Um. Hey, hey, you you had a man crush on Drew Locke. I did, man. I thought there were ten months ago. I ten months ago, like, you I had. A... I was lied to. I was told <laughs> Drew Locke was going to be the man, and I was lied to. I was jilted. You know what? Screw you, Drew Locke. You're out. God, bye. So he's yeah. gone. Teddy Bridgewater is going to come in. They're going to draft the. They either so here's what's going to happen. I think, and I think that this is how Denver's playing it. Peyton Manning went over there towards the end of the career. I think they're, Denver is that type of organization that makes a play for a quarterback late in their career, like a Peyton Manning. And they will, if Aaron Rodgers goes anywhere, I think he ends up in Denver. I mean, he could play there. Yeah. And look, he's he got, can, he could play there. He's got, and he's got a, he's got a stud. Oh, he's got back. stud wide receivers and running backs. So rockets all over and the field. He, he would, he would thrive. He yeah. would thrive Absolutely. over there. No, no doubt in my mind because I mean, I mean, let's be real. Devontae Adams is a great, great wide receiver. Aaron Jones is a great running back, but after that, Rodgers had nothing. Yeah, nothing. Oh wait, no, wait a minute. That team is all pros. That team is loaded. The Packers Dude. are loaded. Dude, they they had no legitimate number two wide receiver. He had to make Alan Lazard a star to, to actually get anywhere. He he had Devontae Williams, Aaron Jones. Who's his tight end over there? Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams is tight end over there? No. Um yeah, he was all right. Um not uh Randall Cobb's on is it no Randall Cobb's on Randall there. Cobb. No, he went to Dallas, so sorry. I apologize. Yeah. Um who was the other no, receiver had, over there? Uh, Lazard was the second. Yeah, I mean, he's got an offensive line that keeps him standing. All right. I mean, dude, he he basically any any and, and in the game against Tampa, if it isn't for a for a blown assignment by a corner <laughs> and not making a catch, I think it was was it a drop pass or something I like that? I think I think that Aaron Rodgers made the team better than they should have been. I don't know. I'm not saying that Aaron Rodgers is great, but that team is stacked, man. That team is a that team is a Super Bowl ready team. They'll be they'll probably be in the NFC Championship next year. You don't think? With Jordan Love reading, leading now? Uh, oh, I, I, I mean, maybe. I mean, who knows? They have depth chart. So, Devontae Adams. Then you got Equin Equinemius St. Brown. Okay. Uh, the law firm uh, Valdez Scantling, who is hit or miss. And you got Alan Lazard. Alan Lazard is listing as number two. And then you got Jay Sternberger. Okay. And um, the other, for some reason, the other um, wide receiver there is not. Oh, Robert Tanyan. Yes, okay. he did good. Tanyan right. did good. Um, I mean, he, you know. It, it's, and then you got Rodgers and Love and then uh, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon now. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not like he doesn't one. have weapons over there. But, man. dude, Alan Lazard was his number two. Like, think about Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton versus Devontae Adams and Alan Lazard. I mean, come on. Okay, but, Mike, he was – they were in the red zone the whole game, and they couldn't put it in the end. Alan Lazard, 33 receptions for 451 yards and three touchdowns. I don't know. I think I think Robert Rodgers, it was it was Tanyan, Adams, and Jones. That was it. Without that, they had nothing. 
Okay. Tanya, 52 receptions, 586, 11 touchdowns. I, I mean, that's, I, look, I, I still think Aaron Rodgers has talent to go to a Super Bowl on that team. That team is loaded. I think they still need a couple pieces on. They on just the, drafted a wide receiver in the third round. Who are they taking in the third round? Who was that kid's name? Devontae Adams is a beast. 115, yeah. 1374, and 18 touchdowns. Yeah. Unbelievable, this guy. Um, who they draft in the third round? I don't know. I'm not looking at it right now. Yeah. Well, look, um, the point is, look, I just think that this thing is it, – it's over. Packers, 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 Green it's, Bay. Yeah, so they got a cornerback, a center, and Amari Rodgers from Clemson, wide receiver. Yeah, there you go. Third round, 22nd pick. <clears throat> yeah. Look, at the end of the day, man, I think it's it, this breakup is inevitable. It's going to happen. Question is, where is he going to go? Who has the draft capital and the means to trade from? That's it. And if they're going to allow him to be traded. Uh, what? Well, yeah. I mean, he doesn't have no trade clause. Well, if the, guy, if, I mean, if the guy wants to But he could just sit out and just be like, look, I'm going to retire. Yeah. Yeah, he, he could just he could just say, "All right, screw you, I'm out." Yeah. Um, DK uh, Metcalf is going to uh, try for the Olympics, join the so. Olympics. He's going to try out for the Olympics. Good for him, represent the country. Um, what is this? Sports stadiums asking fans for their vaccine passports. That's so yeah, eventually. I mean, it's yeah. going to happen eventually, man. It's gonna happen eventually. And yeah, I mean, I got mine. I mean, I got mine ready. And yeah. everyone who does not know, there is an app that you can, you know, upload your your, your, vaccine, your vaccine. You no, know, in New York State there is, but you know, I'm sure there's something available in your uh, in your area as well. So definitely take a look at it. I actually downloaded the app. I haven't done it yet. I need to. I need to actually get on the ball and, and do that. But I definitely want to go to a game. Uh, Yep. Sometime soon, and you're fully vaccinated tomorrow, huh? No, I got my. Oh yeah, tomorrow's the big day. Tomorrow hit tomorrow. that two week mark. Yeah. Where I am fully vaccinated, I can go live life until that. I get a got to get a booster shot or whatever it is. But I am. Yeah. Well, fully, six months. Yeah. So, yeah right I have to go in five months. You got to go in six yeah, months. Whatever. And listen, I'm fully vaccinated. Life is all good. And and what was it we were talking about? Um. Um. We should uh, – I can't remember what I was going to say. I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, anyway. We'll figure it out for next episode. That's oh, yeah, the over-the-counter medication they're, they're coming out with or something? For they're COVID? trying to work on something? Yeah. yeah. By the like end of the year, counter. Pfizer should have an over-the-counter yeah. medication that uh, you might be able to take a, a pill now and, and take it. So, listen, I mean, look, science is incredible. I mean, what these people are coming up with is just – you know, on the, you know, it's incredible, it, but people forget too. They've been working on this stuff for 20 years, you know, started with the first COVID SARS in like 2000 over there. And they've been working on this for, for years. So, and, and then this has spawned other vaccines. I mean, they're talking about vaccines for HIV, vaccines for cancer, you know, so, you know, hopefully uh, some, you know, some good will come out of all this. Yeah. No, let's, uh, but we're trending in the right direction. So uh, there was something else that we needed to mention. Um, I cannot rem remember what it was, or maybe we did mention it. And I'm just probably did. Yeah. So, um, but a uh, quick, you know, we're gonna happy uh, Cinco de Mayo tomorrow, tomorrow. everybody. Have so enjoy, everybody. drink responsibly. Yes. Uh, because when we come back on Thursday, we're gonna be talking about alcohol a lot more. Oh, because yeah. we have uh, a special guest, Justin uh, Honeysuckle from Tended Bar. And we're yeah. excited to talk about what Tended Bar is and, and hear a lot more about it. Um, See, and then next. Drinks right on the right on, right in the show. It, oh, yeah. I, I hope he has some like working prototype there. Yeah, yeah that would yeah. be nice. Uh, I'll reach out to him and see if he's got, <laughs> if he's got something that he could show us live. Yeah. Um, and then next Tuesday. A fan experience TV first, everybody. We are going to be joining our good friend, Matt Wolf. He was one of our, what was he, guest three, <laughs> three four, three something four. like that. So um, from Ticket Time Machine, and he has his own show now. For those Wolf of you Den. who do not know, it's called The Wolf Den. That is Wolf with two Fs. 
Go check him out because mm-hmm. next Tuesday, a special crossover event. A simulcast, We everybody. will We will be joining him on the Wolf Den at 8.30 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday, May 11th. And then at 9 o'clock, you will see us right here joined by Matt Wolf. So we are going to have a crossover event, two shows, one night, and same great fans. So uh, until then, we will see you on Thursday 1st. And um, enjoy the rest of Star Wars night. Uh, you know, go oh, check out the May new- the fourth. May the fourth. May the fourth be, be with you. Go check out the new Star Wars content for all you Star Wars fans out there. You know, a lot of stuff. Bad Batch is out on uh, Disney Plus, and uh, amongst other things. I think I'm gonna watch a, at least one of the movies or an episode <laughs> of something just so I can get some kind of Star Wars stuff in uh, in today. Um, I'm surprised they have a Star Wars marathon. I'm sure they did somewhere. Okay, yeah. Uh, but also Disney probably, you know, has a has a hold on it because it's on Disney Plus and everything. Uh, so. Okay. Well, we'll we'll see. I mean, I don't yeah. know. And um, enjoy the rest of the night. Enjoy Cinco de Mayo, everybody. And uh, we will uh, see you right back here Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Have a good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Peace.